Have you ever found an item online that you just love to make but you can't find a tutorial anywhere? Well, that's exactly what happened to me last week. But lo and behold, I've made this awesome cuff bracelet out of none other than aluminum cans. And I'm going to show you how to, so stick around. Oh, you're outside the lines. First, you're going to want to wash your cans to be sure they're perfectly clean. Then you're going to break them down. I'm going to link to a tutorial on our tool for the best way to break down these cans. For this project, we're going to need two pieces of aluminum can. I've cut this one to a width of an inch and a quarter, but it can be as wide as you'd like for your cuff bracelet. You're going to cut it to the length that's going to fit your wrist. I have a fairly small wrist, so mine is only about six and a quarter, six and an eighth inches. But that will be individually tailored to whatever your wrist is. For the width of this backer piece, I'm gonna cut it to about an inch and five eighths. What's gonna happen is, this is gonna sit in the middle. We're gonna divide the extra width into two and we're gonna fold on two lines here and then right at the edge of the inner piece. And that will enclose it. Again, we'll do the same with the outer edges, but on the outer edges, as you can see here, it's gonna be wider. And the width that I have for the shorter edge is about a quarter inch. So, at the edges here, we're going to make it half an inch wider and again we're going to score two lines so that we can fold it. So let's go ahead and bring in a paper cutter and we're going to go ahead and cut on that line. If you don't have a paper cutter just use a ruler and an exacto blade and just score a line. You should be able to bend it back and forth and snap it clean. Okay let's recycle this piece. And now we've got our backer here. So you're going to be working with this face up because when this is enclosed you want to see the back which is silver as we've done here. So from here what you can do is you can just lay it into the middle and I just eyeball this. So you can just go ahead and trace right around the inner piece so you know where your fold lines are going to be. We're going to go ahead and I think I'll just do this a little bit wider than half an inch. I'll add a sixteenth. I'm just going to cut the length away and do be sure to wear eye protection as you do this. You don't want anything flying up into your eye. This metal is sharp. And again we'll recycle all our excess pieces here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to cut along the edges here. I'm actually going to cut inside the fold lines and I'm going to cut inside this fold line. And just bend that to snap it off. And again, be sure to cut inside that line. You don't want to be right on it because you want to be able to fold there without impeding that fold. You don't want the bulk. That's what we're doing right now is we're cutting away some of this bulk. So there's one end. I'm going to do exactly the same thing with the other end here. And again, we're cutting beyond that fold line. And if you're coming up short, you can just bend it back and forth to snap it off. So 
So there it is with all the bulk cut away. The next step is to score along our fold lines. But before we do that, we have to divide these outer lines in half because they're gonna be folded in twice. So let's go ahead and take our ruler and we're just gonna divide that in half. So you've got two lines on that one edge. We're gonna do the same thing with the other edge. Just divide that in half. Same thing with this outer edge here. I'm gonna score a line 3 8 of an inch from the edge. And again, 3 8 of an inch from this edge. Now I'm gonna score along all those lines. And what I have here is an awl, but it's not too sharp, it's a bit dull. You don't want it so sharp that it's gonna cut through your aluminum can here. Just wanna score it so you know where you're bending. Be sure to put something underneath, like this foam mouse pad or even a magazine will do. Score along the lines on the other side too. And again, you're gonna score along the two outer lines on the edge here. So what's gonna happen now, is we're gonna insert the inset here. We're gonna fold in these shorter edges first, and then the longer ones starting from the outside in. So let's go ahead and fold this. Now keep in mind, once you fold it, there's no going back because then you're gonna snap it. I'll show you an example of that just a little later. So be sure you've got everything where you want it here. I'm actually quite a bit off with this line here. I missed the mark completely. So before I do anything, I'm just gonna rescore that and hopefully things aren't gonna snap on me. It's hard to see the fine detail when you've got a camera in front of your face. So when you're doing this, just take the time to make sure that you're more accurate. Hopefully that works out. We shall see. Go ahead and burnish those edges. Make sure there's gonna be enough wiggle room for this inset here that it's not gonna to be too tight. If you do feel it'll be tight, you can always trim it up just a little bit. I think I am gonna trim just the slightest bit off on this edge. It's better to be safe than sorry. Because once you bend these things, there's no going back. So there's one edge bent. Let's turn that around and do the other edge. You can go ahead and burnish that. You want it nice and flat. Here's where we're at. We've bent in the shorter sides here. That's a double fold. And we're just about to do the outer edges. So we're working from the outside in. So we're just gonna take our ruler and that will help bend along that score. We'll do the same with this other side here. And if you can't get the ruler in there, you can take a pair of flat nose pliers like this and just hold it on the line and bend up. And just do that all the way along. So 
So just finish folding that down. Now you can take the edge of your Sharpie here and just burnish that down well. After the first edge is folded, we're going to continue with our double fold. Now it's time to fold in the rest of the edge. And again, you can take your pliers to help bend it. I would start from one end and just work your way down. And again, you want to take your straight edge and just lay it along that line. You can just reinforce that. Once you're happy with it, you can go ahead and bend it over. So there's one edge done. And again, you want to burnish that. So I'll take my Sharpie and just run it right along. And what I like about this particular Sharpie is that it has a little bit of a edge here. That lip is perfect for lining it up along the edge and just gliding it along. And it does a beautiful job of burnishing that. You can see how rippled the other edge is in comparison. So I'm going to go ahead and finish off this last edge here and then we'll bend that over and we'll be ready to shape our cuff. And there you go. Your bracelet is all enclosed. So now we're going to shape it. To start the shaping you're going to take any soft edge and you're just going to start to roll it along. Now it's better to take this to the edge of a table to do it so that you can hang it over. So let's just swing over here and now we have a clear edge that we can bend over. So this is going to start the shaping. Just want to do this gently. If you don't have anything with a soft edge like the edge of this paper cutter, you can try a broomstick handle or a dowel, just anything circular that you can gently press on. And there's the start of the shape. So we're gonna finish finessing on something with a bit of a tighter edge. Now here's the arm of my other paper cutter and it has a nice round arm. And for this one, I've done more of an oval shape as compared to this one which is a little bit more round which is perfectly fine for my wrist but if you have a bigger wrist what you'll do is you'll just concentrate on bending on the edges. You'll flip it around and again you're just going to press down concentrating on the edges. And that gives you that oval shape and this is perfectly fine for a larger wrist. As you can see, it's still fine for me. It gives me a bit of a loose look, more of a bangle than a cuff. Whereas this one fits my wrist pretty tight. Before we get to the reveal, I'm just going to leave you with this tip of what happened when I was working on the Coke can. As you'll see in a moment, you cannot bend the metal back and forth because it's going to snap. So watch and learn. And then you can go ahead and bend the sides in here. Oh no, that wasn't supposed to happen. I snapped it off. Most importantly, once you bend something forward, never bend it back because that will cause it to break along that score line. This is a happy circumstance though because it doesn't hurt just to have one fold along this shorter edge, so I'm going to work with it. 
I'll go ahead and snap off the other side too to make them even and I'll only have one fold on the short ends, which is perfectly fine. And there you go. When I'm not wearing it, I'm going to store it on this really cool old vintage oil can. If you like doing can projects, you're going to love our new DIY tool. To see how I break down the cans using it, be sure to watch this video. You can find the full tutorial over at birdsofafeather.ca and don't forget to like, share and follow right here.